Welcome back, everyone, to more Zero K Exhibition matches. And this is probably the last match for tonight. It's Orphilius and Mark Eves on Honest Cauldron. I know I said a Hokumoko last time, and apparently that was not a very good match. And I don't want to cast bad matches. So I'm going to humor Orphilius, because apparently that was not a very interesting match. So let's watch an interesting match, according to the people who played it. Marky is going for the Kogabot Factory, while Hovercraft is Orphelius' choice, which makes a lot of sense considering this map is very water heavy. There's water everywhere. Also, I'm inside it now. But, yeah, water exists. Hovercrafts can kind of go over the water. It's a little bit awkward because the pathing next to it, like, you can go in, but. No, you can't go in. It's perfectly viable. Never mind. No, you're good. The only problem for Hovercraft is, that, as you can see, they have very limited paths that they can take throughout the southwest section, which is a huge amount of metal. Like, right there, that's 20 metal per second. You can get right off of this entire set of... Sorry, 18. You can get off this entire set of metal extractors. Hovercraft is a much harder time than any bot factory. So you don't usually see bot factories played in this map. Still, though, Mark Eves does have a cloaky bot factory. Sorry, you don't usually see non-bot factories played in this map. Vehicle factories are rare. Hovercraft can work because it does have this lake to work with, but that's about it. Anyway, the... Dagger's coming in here as well. Orphelia's going very quick on that, and no no construction really coming from either side. We have the one Conjurer coming from Marquise, and everything after that is just Glaives. Going entirely for the aggression. I wouldn't be surprised if they canceled the Glaives halfway through and then switched off to something else. Because sometimes when you see like 20 or something like that, it's usually they just hit Control plus the button. Because when you hit Control plus button, you end up getting 20 units of that type. Or Control or Control Shift. I think Control Shift is 100. Anyway... That sometimes is just a thing people do if they don't want to pay attention to the factory, and then they'll go back there, cancel the construction, and build something else. So I think Marquis might just be doing that later on. Orphelius, on the other hand, they are going for just enough daggers to help hold the line. About five of them or so, that's enough to one-shot a couple glaives at once. So you enough to one-shot most anything the Klokobot's going to throw out at this stage in the game. But that's more so for the Metal Life and as we see already... Just double-checking if the Southwest has gotten any construction. So far, no. So far, Marquise has not built there at all. However, Marquise does have the old Gremlin Scout. Good old Gremlin Scout. You can see everything going on, sees the factory, and knows exactly what Orphelius is up to. And Orphelius, on the other hand, has not spotted it yet. Like, he's right here, and it's like, nope. Nope, it's so close, but nope. You can't see it. So yeah, that gremlin is going to have a nice time just hanging around. Kind of surprising, Orphelius has not focused on building up their entire energy infrastructure in their main base. Normally, you will see wind generators built across the entire setup, but not today. That's interesting. That's subtly unusual. And it does mean this gremlin has more room to play. That's the important thing. If wind generators had been built there, the gremlin would have a much harder time exploring because it would get close to the wind generator and the decloak radius would be triggered. And that's actually what's going to happen right now! As this Quill is going to come in and start decloaking, but at the same time, over the front lines, we have a Scythe as well from Marquis, who's playing the Clickybot Factory the way that, well, the way the name suggests. While at the same time, with the Glaives in the back line to help start taking out some of the economy, nicely done. That is two metal extractors for the price of a Glaive. That's a totally worthy trade. Okay, two Glaives, not as worthy, but still not bad. Orphelia's ahead in economy regardless, but Marquis has taken advantage of the situation to start building up their own economy. They've pushed forward, they've applied that pressure. But again, here's that lake. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Orphelia's has this lake here, and that means they can just set up. This isn't something that the Klokibot Factory can deal with. Ronin can kind of help. Slings can definitely help. But overall, that water is going to be a bit of a pain. That, that is going to be a thorn in Marquis' side, unless they decide to terraform the entire lake. Which, good luck to them if they try to do that, because there's no room. At the same time, their frontline army is basically all dead now. Still, though, the backline, the Scythe coming in here, they know that there's not much here. They know there's no defenses, and this Quill's completely unprotected. They've got, the, they've got the Caretaker being built up, and the Caretaker will not be finished. So there we go, that Scythe able to just start hacking away at everything in Orphelius' backline. Destroy all the economy, by the time the Daggers get there, it's too late. The Constructor's dead. Most of the in-base economy is dead. The Gremlin has no threat whatsoever. I mean, it can just continue scouting. Knows exactly what's going on. I think. Let's double check. Yep. Knows exactly what's going on. So, no problems there. 
And at the same time, that leaves this glaive setup open to die. I mean, like I said, the, the daggers, there's more than enough to easily one-shot all these glaives. So the glaives are really going into a foolish fight. However, they still manage to get the metal extractor. And that, to me, is the key thing. While at the same time, flanking over to the north, like Mark Eves, they are playing this Cloakybot factory as the flank factory. Which they should. Glaives are very fast raiders. This is what they excel at. So nicely done, Mark Eves. I really like the style. And of course, at the same time, they're... They're securing metal extractors as they do this. I would kind of like to see them secure them a little faster, like get one or two more conjurers just to set up the entire southwest side, because this southwest could have been taken. Marquis could be at 30 metal per second by now. But, as it stands, the way that they are approaching it is still quite smart. They're just leaving themselves open for their opponents to build up and come back, as the dagger's coming in here. Might attest to, they will be able to start taking out this metal extractor, assuming they see... No! Oh yeah, they do see it. Of course they see it. Their vision range is definitely high enough. And again, we see more glaives getting torn apart by bandits. Sorry, not bandits. Yeah, it's always bandits, but not today. It's daggers today. Getting torn apart by daggers. And the daggers will probably go down. Okay, they're going to go down to this line of bandits. I really like how this actually set up. In fact, the daggers pretty much hitting the strongest part of that line. So with this, the glaives should be able to start tearing apart Aphelios' base. No defenses have been built up. The commander did retreat into the main base and does not have anything other than their base laser. They have no real way of tearing apart the glaives. And the glaives are destroying the hovercraft factory, or they should be pretty soon. There's the surround. Okay, come on, just get a surround on the factory. All right, factory's down. Orphelius has nothing to build with yet. And I don't know if they're going to stay in the game much longer. I mean, Markeev's... They've done all their flanking, they've done all their attacking, and they've really had that payoff. Nicely done, Mark Eves. Coming in with less metal, too. Less metal, a bit more army value by the... Actually, a bit more army value throughout the entire game. What is the metal used for? Okay, defense and economy. Okay, so Orphelius was playing the late game. Mark Eves is going, you know what? Screw the late game. I'm just going to mass glaives, rush in, and wreck face. Going to flank to this side, then I'm going to flank to the other side... And then I'm going to flank down the middle, and then I'm going to send 20 glaze into your main base after hanging on to a scout the entire game. Very well done, Marquis. I... So the thing with gremlins, you see these every once in a while. Usually every six months to a year, there's a meta swing. And it's basically, people forget gremlins can be used for scouting. So then people use gremlins for scouting. And then people remember that gremlins can be used for scouting, start counter-scouting, like sending a raider just to go around their base to figure out what's going on, start finding the gremlins. There might be a short while where there's a tiny bit of arms race as to gremlin positioning, but then the gremlin scouters just go, you know what, okay, fine, I guess I can't use gremlins for now, and stop using gremlins, and then people forget gremlins can be used for scouting, and the cycle starts over. So, we're at the, we're at the front end of that cycle from the looks of it. But I'm sure Orphelius will be watching for that in their next games. Just make sure they don't have that gremlin scout. And I mean, they almost did catch it. It's just that they they had that caretaker being built up, and it didn't build up in time. By the point, If that scythe hadn't gotten there, then yes, it would have been fine. The caretaker would have helped out. All the wind gens would have been built quickly enough, and the gremlin would have at the very least been pushed far enough away that it wouldn't have been able to scout the factory. And that's the important thing. But that is going to be... That is going to be it, I'd say, for me, because I usually do only three matches, and it's actually been over an hour since I started. Granted, that was also because of breaks and technical problems, but at any rate, thanks for watching. I hopefully will have a hotkey video at some point before Steam release. Not hopefully, I will have a hotkey video before Steam release. Thanks for pointing out things I could have put in there, or could put in there, such as pointing out that there are... Oh, what was the thing pointing out? Actually, there were, there were good suggestions. I can't remember what they were. Everyone in the Twitch chat is telling me all the things I can do. Oh, yeah, unit states. That's what it was. Telling people unit states were a thing. Because that is a thing. Because unit states are... Um, unit states are the micro of the game. Like, that is the thing about 0k that can be a little hard to wrap one's head around, is that while you can micro by selecting targets or by doing your attack, your fight move or force firing stuff, generally speaking, the micro that happens is sending the unit states properly. Like, you hold position by sending the move state to hold position. You hold fire, same thing with your fire state. 
units like gunships, they have strafe states you can set up. There's a lot of things with that that unit states matter greatly to how units work in this game. So yeah, having hockey set up for that. I think the default is usually alt and buttons. Like alt and various keys in the grid setup. I have a totally different hockey setup right now, so it's its own thing. Anyway, that's that. I'm rambling. So thanks for watching. Have a good night. And we'll see I'll see you all in the Steam release next Friday.